Well, good, good morning, everybody, and, and welcome to our lounge. Uh, and I, I'm glad so many people are sitting at the front because there's plenty of people behind you, uh, plenty of space behind you in the lounge for this service of morning prayer, which is coming, for those of you who don't know, on Tuesday the 31st of March. So let's spend a moment in quiet, uh, just remembering that we are in the presence of God and we are also in the presence of each other. God says, welcome. I'm so glad you've found the time to join together with me and with the rest of your family. Amen. Amen. So, in the name of the Father, Father and, and of, of the, the Son, Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen. Christ, have mercy. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless mercy. Glory. And now, the collect after which we'll have a reading. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And our reading is the Old Testament lesson for today. It's Numbers 21, starting at verse 4. They travelled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go round Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the desert? There's no bread, there's no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a, made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then anyone who was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, he lived. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Father, as we think about this passage, please speak to us and help us to live lives of faith. 
Amen. Amen. So, the children of Israel in the desert, being going from Egypt to the Promised Land, sinned again. They complained about their conditions, they complained about the lack of food, and they complained to their leaders. And God sent snakes amongst them, they were bitten, they repented, and God told Moses to make a bronze serpent. And those who took their, uh, who obeyed God, took their eyes off the problem, did what they were told, looked at this snake, they were healed. And we're in a crisis at the moment, and God is saying, take your eyes off the problem, take your eyes off what you want to complain about, and obey me. Then it was, look at my snake and you will be healed. And those who obeyed were healed. But the snake became an object of worship. 2 Kings 18 says, starting in verse 3, Hezekiah did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father David had done. He removed the high places, smashed the sacred stones and cut down the Asherah poles. He broke into pieces the bronze snake Moses had laid, made. For up to that time the Israelites had been burning incense to it and calling it Nehushtan. The people had focused on the created object and not on the creator. They would lost sight of God and we're looking just at the snake. Jesus, in John 3.14, just before that famous, say, famous one, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus says, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everybody who believes in him may have eternal life in him. Though Jesus is saying those who look to him will have eternal life. Today, we're praying for deliverance from coronavirus. And we see God working through the NHS. We see him working through research scientists and through many other people. But we must beware of worshipping them. Instead, we must be grateful to them, grateful to God for them, but we must remember to look beyond them to Jesus, who alone is our Saviour, and deals with a problem far, far greater than coronavirus, the problem of sin which separates us from our Father. So, we need to look at Jesus, not the problem. We need to trust in Jesus not trust the problem. Focus on Jesus and not focus on the problem. Let's pray together. Father, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come upon us and however coronavirus and shutdown and lockdown is affecting us, help us to take our eyes off our problems, off our concerns, and focus instead on you and on Jesus, lifted up high that we might be delivered and raised that we might have life. Amen. Amen. So now, let's pray together. And we want to start by praying for God's blessing on on Torbay Hospital and those who work in it, especially on Jason and Julia who've asked for their for God's prayers, for prayers, and also from those we know who are working there. Please name anybody you know who works in the hospital. Annie, Johnny. Johnny. Father, we pray your protection 
on all the people who work in the hospital, especially those we've mentioned, that you will keep them safe from the virus, that should they catch it, the symptoms will be mild, and that they will recover quickly. And in the meantime, we pray that you will bless them. Bless them with the energy they need. Bless them with peace. Guard their hearts and their minds that they aren't afraid. And we pray that you will equip them with the personal skills they need and also with the protective equipment that they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And Father, we remember too that the world faces other problems, problems which we're taking our eyes off at the moment. And we pray for the government in all the decisions it takes. We pray as they seek to get the economy back on track afterwards, to make plans for the end of lockdown. We pray too for other governments around the world. We pray for the poorest nations who haven't got the resources to cope with coronavirus. That you will give their governments wisdom. And we think about the challenge of climate change which won't go away. And we pray that the world will repent, change. And that after this the world will be a better place. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And now in a moment of quiet, bring to the Lord anything that's concerning you. And let's finish our prayer time by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, Christ as, as a light, light illumine and, and guide me. Christ as a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me. Christ over me. Christ beside me. Christ on my left and on my right. This day be within me and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, be in the mouth of each who speaks to me. This day be within me and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Christ as a sheet, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me, on Christ my left, on my left, and on my right. And now, may the peace of the Lord Christ go with us, wherever he may send us. May he guide us through the wilderness, protect us through the storm. May he bring us home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown us. May he bring us home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you all very much for joining us, and there will be another service tomorrow, uh, hopefully led by Joyce. So, click in and try. <laughs> click in and watch that. Goodbye.